Hello, I'm Coach Skip, and welcome to today's edition of uh, At Home Workout from Wildfire Fitness and Wildfire CrossFit. So today we have something a little bit different for you, and I know you, I took off for a second, but that's okay. Um, so here's what, here's what we got. We're going to get into a warm-up. Um, and this is going to be a minute stations. And so we're going to start out making sure you've got a clock set up, uh, grab a, grab a phone, grab a timer. If you've got a watch with a second hand, any of those things will work. And the first thing you're going to start out with is one to two minutes of running in place. And just to get that heart rate up, get a sweat going and stay on your toes, use those arms and legs to move, keep those knees up. And this doesn't need to be a really uh, fast, explosive. It's not like you're sprinting. Just bring those feet off the ground just two or three inches just to get them moving. Now, again, as we've done in the past, as you have um, any kind of impact issues or injuries, uh, knees, hips, and anything like that, then do more of a, a walking in place and just bring those feet up as fast as you can without necessarily the, the pounding or the impact that we have with running. And still, Use those arms to get moving, and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to help get the heart rate up and get that sweat going that we're looking for uh, getting into this today's workout. So once you do one to two minutes of running in place, then you're going to get three rounds of the warm-up. We're going to be doing 10 calf raises, 10 up dog stretch, and then 10 plank to push up. So here's how those go. On the calf raises, you're just going to – Stand on your tiptoes and really stretch those calves. If you can hold it for two to three seconds at the top, that's going to be ideal to really get that stretch in the calves every single time. Coincidentally, if you were here for our workout yesterday and did the jump ropes, this is also a really good stretch to relieve some of that uh, pressure and soreness from those calf muscles as well. So uh, 10 calf raises. If you need to have something nearby to hold on to, uh, the back of a couch, a chair, anything like that, that's totally fine to do. It's not going to hurt this exercise at all to hold on to something while you're doing those, those calf raises. Then we're going to get into uh, the up dog stretch. On this, you are going to go onto the, the ground, and you are going to push your chest away from the ground and really push those hips into the ground. And just up and down 10 times, each time getting a little bit deeper and higher into that stretch. The other thing you can do here is kind of twist back and forth a little bit to open up that core and specifically your obliques and really get that core warmed up and ready to go uh, for the, the core grinder that we've got for you. The next one is going to be plank to push up. So on those plank to push-ups, you're going to start in the plank position and then just go up to the push-up position and back down again. And that is one rep. Two, three. If you need to do this from your knees, that's fine. And the same thing, just right up and down ten times. So for the warm-up, do a one to two minutes of running in place. Then you're going to do three rounds of 10 calf raises, 10 up dog stretch, and 10 plank to push-ups. Now, for the workout today and why I'm staying down here on the ground um, is we are doing a core grinder. So you are, if, even if you have trouble like getting up and down a lot uh, with this, as long as you can get up and down off the ground, you're pretty much going to be staying down there the entire time. And, and we want you to stay down there the entire time. So this core grinder is going to have eight different exercises, and there's a couple of different ways you can go through this. Our suggestion is to do one minute at each station, and that's what we're going to call the, the prescribed version of this workout. That's what we've got posted and beyond the whiteboard. You can also, if you find right away that one minute is too long, then shorten that to 30, 45 or 30 seconds. And the whole point is just to stay moving as much as possible throughout that time period. But again, set a watch, set a timer. Uh, I'll actually post a link in the comment section for a Tabata timer that you can use. That's a very easy to set a minute running clock that'll keep resetting at a minute uh, over and over and over again 
for all the rounds that you need to do here. So we're gonna start with the flutter kick. And so on the flutter kick, you're gonna be flat on your back, really push that lower back into the ground, keep those toes pointed, and just a small kick here. If you need to put your hands underneath your hips, that's totally fine. And that's just gonna help you stabilize those hips. If you work on keeping your feet off the ground for the entire time period, and what that means is if you need to bring your knees into your chest to, to rest for a second, that's okay. And then go right back out and keep doing those, those flutter kicks. If you would like to count these um, to be able to enter into the, the beyond the whiteboard, then just two right plus left is going to equal one rep. The next one is going to be Superman. And so this, you're just going to roll right over onto your stomach and you're going to bring your chest and thighs off the ground and then right back down again. And just keep that motion going. On this one, you can do more of a hold and you can hold for a longer period of time and then relax and then go right back up again. When you're in that relax mode, just stay there for you know 20 or, or uh, five seconds or so to two to five seconds, uh, but no more than that before between uh, going back up into the Superman again. The next one is going to be sit-ups. And on these sit-ups, you can either butterfly the feet this way or put the legs straight out in front of you. And this is okay to throw your arms forward and really throw your arms forward and get all the way up to the top on this one. Um, really get that, that range of motion. Now, if you need some assistance here, you find you're not able to get all the way up there, then what you can do is just grab a water bottle, uh, something that weighs just a, a couple of pounds. Um, if, if you've got something bigger, like a, a milk jug or something like that, that'll work just fine. But all this is gonna do is help you get a little momentum to get you up to the the, the top and get that full range of motion that we're looking for on the sit up. As you sit up, stay up nice and tall. This isn't like letting everything go and, and letting the back round or anything. We want to keep that chest up every time. So this is what it's going to look like right in here. You can throw those arms forward. If you can do it without any assistance, that's ultimately what we want to work up to. And so just you can still throw your arms forward though to get that, that range of motion. So that's your third exercise is the sit up. And then we're gonna go right into the Russian twist. Now on the Russian twist, you're gonna work on keeping your feet off the ground and you're just moving your body back and forth on this one. Again, if you find it easier to be able to hold on to something while you're doing this, that's fine and just going back and forth. And again, we're just working those, uh, those core muscles and getting the best range of motion possible uh, when you're working back and forth. Again, if you need to put your feet down in between and kind of go back and forth this way, where each time when you're, you're moving your, your body side to side, you're bringing your feet off the ground, that's totally fine uh, and a really good way to do this Russian twist exercise. Uh, number five is a really simple one. We've done this one before. Uh, most of you have done a plank hold in some way, shape, or form, but you're either going to go from your forearms or from your, your hands, whichever is the most comfortable for you. But what we want to see is that straight, uh, straight uh, angle from your shoulders all the way down to your heels uh, with your body, with your torso. If all of a sudden you're pushing your hips up into the air, you're not really gonna be working the core nearly as much. So, so we want everything to be straight as a board, really squeeze your butt, squeeze your legs, and squeeze that core the entire time during this plank, uh, plank hold. And again, stay, stay right there and just hold for that entire minute. If you find getting up and holding here for more than five or 10 seconds is a challenge, then it's definitely okay to go from your knees and do the exact same thing, but again, we want to keep that, that torso straight, no teepees. We don't want that butt up in the air. Keep everything solid and straight the entire time for that plank hold. And if you can go off your toes, 
that's definitely going to be better for you. Next is going to be lemon squeezers. Switch directions here. On the lemon squeezer, you're going to start flat on your back with your arms overhead. And if you can stay engaged in the hollow position for the entire minute and go this way, and just keep that uh, engagement the entire time, then that's awesome. If you need to start from a, a more resting position and then roll in and touch those heels and really squeeze, pretend you've got a lemon right in your belly button that you're squeezing and making juice. So all the way out, all the way in, and just back and forth here for the entire minute. We've got two left here. The next one is going to be a plank jack. So we're gonna be in that same plank position we were just in, only this time we're gonna be moving the legs back and forth just like in a jumping jack. So again, from the forearms or from the hands, and you're just going out and in. And just keeping this going for the entire minute. If you need to do it from your hands, same thing, that's totally fine. Again, with any kind of impact issues, if you need to step out and step back, that's totally fine too. And it'll just look like this. You just go back and forth here, or again from the forearms, just back and forth. And this is gonna work the core, the legs, the entire body. The last one we have, you're gonna see in the comment section, it's actually a complicated name. It's called a alternating contralateral dead bug. We're just gonna call it a dead bug for short. And you're gonna be flat on your back and you're just gonna bring your right arm to your left leg and your left arm to your right leg. And just go back and forth for that entire minute right in here. Uh, again, if the range of motion is getting to you, then bring your elbow to your knee. And just get as close as possible. If you're having to use more of your hand to your knee, then uh, again, get the best range of motion possible for what you've got. So again, one more time, the core grinder, one minute at each station uh, is the goal. Flutter kicks, Superman, sit-ups, Russian twist, plank holds, lemon squeezers, plank jacks, and dead bugs. Once you get completely done with all that, take a one minute rest and then go through it again. This is also a really good workout to have on hand for a day where you say, hey look, I need something to do. I don't have access to the internet. Have this written down somewhere so you can pull it out. And if there's other core exercises that you've seen that you know of uh, that you wanna uh, throw into the mix, go for it. That's all what, what it's all about, being able to create your own and, and have fun doing it. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, work through this one. Uh, like I said, I'm going to post the Tabata timer in the uh, um, comment section so you have a, a running clock that you can use that's an easy app for your phone. But let us know if you have any questions. Keep it going. And as always, we're here to help. So thanks a lot. Coach Skip signing off, and I will see you guys soon. Have a great day.